had a question from one of my students about uh, cleaning up your list and getting rid of those people who uh, have not opened or not uh, clicked on anything for a period of time. Um, realist realistically, it's quite hard to do retrospectively. You have to kind of do it as you go along. Um, I'll show you that solution, but we'll first let's have a look at the issues that you have if you try and do it retrospectively. So you're going to need advanced search, which you find crazily from clicking on search contacts. Um, you can do, but you can't do it as a time-based thing. You can do, um, let's have a look. Let's do inner list. So they're in, they're in that list. And let's have a look. A couple of things I might do. Where's actions? Actions has not clicked on a link. Any campaign, any link. And actions has not opened any email or campaign. And you might want to put some uh, limits on that, obviously, because people who are new. Um, so we just need to find the contact details. Where's the time date subscribed? So date subscribed is uh, greater than, let's have a look, whatever date you want to put. Sorry, date subscribed is greater than, so that's after. No, okay, subscribed is less than it needs to be, doesn't it? Less than or equal to, let's pick a particular date in the past. Say a few months ago. Um, and then that should give you, obviously this is my demo data, so it's not terribly exciting. Um, okay, now, those ones are obviously demo, so I've, I've I've obviously got rid of too much there. Let's have a look. Maybe that date subscribed one is a bit funky. Let's just try that without it. You probably need, you definitely need to experiment a bit with uh, with that date. Let's have a look. Search. There we go. So that's picked out picked out a few people. I would definitely go through another little look and see what you see with some of these. Now, you, so having done that, you might want to uh, tag those so you can easily come back to them. So you could select all of them and then let's have a look. So what we should have done then was if we go back to those conditions, we can save that away as a segment and then we can do other stuff with it so we can go back to that. Uh, back to that list. So obviously once you've got the list you can uh, do things like export it. So that should have just those two. Now that's one of the things I'd recommend you do is, is to export it any ones that you're going to get rid of because otherwise you can't get them back again in any way. Um, that's opening Excel so it might take a little while. Um, the other thing you might want to do with those names is to put them into another email system uh, where you mail them a little bit more um, you can still try to get them back onto things on your other list. But by taking them out of the, the active campaign, it'll improve your deliverability. And kind of keeping them in another system will mean that your poor are deliverable ones, um, which may still worth be trying to get resurrected, can go somewhere else. So find somewhere cheap to put them. You get when you export, you'll get a spreadsheet with all the details in. Um, so you can recreate some of this stuff if you needed to to put it back in again at some point or put it in somewhere else. So that's how I do it retrospectively. If you're doing it um, as you go along, this is one of the first automations I would put in place. Uh, we'd go off and let's have a look where's automation. I think it's... Bear me a sec. It's probably in the middle one. I think it might be called click recency. Or I just missed it in the first page. There it is. It wasn't the first page. Okay, so this is kind of the first thing I would set up before you do much more on your active campaign. So I've got a couple of things here. So I've got an automation that triggers um, when the contact clicks on a link or reads an email. If I just click on those, you'll see those are set up as clicks on any email, any list, any link, and it runs multiple times. That multiple times is important, otherwise this won't work. Same with the read one, any email, any list, multiple times. So what I then do is I then put on a series of tags 
when somebody does that, when they interact with the email. So I put in a tag for one week, one month, three months, and six months. So that basically says that, that they have done something within those time periods, if those tags are on that person. So you can pick off by anyone that's really current, or has done something in the last month, the last three months, or last six months. And so what we basically do then here is, um, I wait a week, and uh, if that so basically the person enters that automation, it's put those tags on, it waits a week, and then it gets rid of the one week, and then it waits another three weeks, gets rid of the month, waits another two months, it gets rid of the three month one, and so on. So you can see, so by the end, they have no tags. Um, might be improved by adding another tag to say, I've got no nothing going on. You might also want to do at one well, some point in here, you might want to do some kind of re engagement campaign. Um, but that by putting those tags on, that basically means that you can see. So you can just do a query for anyone who who, um, who hasn't done anything in the last six months. Um, you might, as I say, could add a final tag in here to say uh, uh, they're just disengaged, and you could then pick people off from that. Um, so there's, there's room, certainly room for improvement in that one. Uh, but that's how I would. That's really how I would do it. So hopefully that's helped.